It is good to worship with you. We give thanks for the vaccination progress in our area and are now able to worship in person in the building. Our in-person services are at 10 a.m. on Sundays and all are welcome. We will continue to worship online as well. We collect non-perishable food items each Sunday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the church building and invite all to love our neighbors through groceries. We give thanks for the ways in which we remain connected with one another and for your gifts of time and resources that support the mission and ministry of Holy Trinity. We join in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, There is always more than enough. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Songs of love is born. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will be used for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is a masterful storyteller, and we hear two of his common parables or stories today in the Gospel. I love when Jesus begins stories with the kingdom of God is as if or the kingdom of God is like. So much of Jesus' time was spent trying to articulate who God is, what God cares about, and the essence and the reality of the kingdom of God. It took me a long time to really value kingdom of God language, because frankly, I'm not a fan of kingdoms and principalities. I'm not a fan of the systems of this world. And the previously, when I thought about the kingdom of God, it made me twitch a bit because I grew up thinking it was just a nicer version of this broken world we live in now. And that never really translated into much hope. It certainly did not translate into the hope of the gospel I now put my faith in. But when we spend time examining how Jesus explains the kingdom of God, that reality is one filled with hopeful expectations that far exceed the brokenness of the world in which we live. I'm someone who likes to understand the hows and the whys of the world, and I really want to know how God works. I want to know why. If God is redeeming and reconciling the world, why does God not just snap their fingers and call it done? Bring healing and justice and love and mercy now and take away the brokenness and the suffering for communities of people and individuals alike. Well, as it turns out, I'm not meant to or even capable of fully understanding the hows and the whys, but through Jesus' stories, we catch a glimpse of what the kingdom of God is like. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, I often wonder if I and others really think about what we're saying. Do we really think about what we're saying when we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done? Ultimately, we're not praying for our will or our personal desires in any given situation and circumstance. Rather, we are asking for God's will. 
And we are asking for the inbreaking of God's kingdom here and now, as well as the fullness and completeness of God's kingdom in a time to come. So what do we learn from Jesus today about the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is as if someone throws seeds on the ground, goes to sleep, and then the work of the seed happens without anyone fully understanding how. And the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, planted in the ground only to grow into the one of the largest shrubs, providing shelter and comfort for the birds looking for a home. We learn that God works through the background, bringing about new life. That when it appears that God is doing nothing, growth and life are springing forth. We learn that God is capable of taking something seemingly worthless on first glance, gifts it, and gives it purpose. We learn that God interconnects and builds relationships. We learn that God knew the needs of the bird and used the creative goodness of the mustard seed. How do you think Jesus would describe the kingdom of God in parables today, in modern language and imagery? I wonder if God would say something like the kingdom of God is like looking at the world through a child's innocent eyes, without prejudice or judgment, just love and all. The kingdom of God is like there is an empty playground and people down the street filled it with basketball hoops, sprinklers, wagons, and balls for kids and families to play with. The kingdom of God is like when there was a pandemic and everyone put their neighbors first, masking and distancing and calling in to check in on those who are alone. The kingdom of God is both now and not yet. The seeds have been planted and God is tending within each of our lives. Receive the nurture and be willing for God's work to be done in your life. For we are all being changed. For the kingdom of God is like nothing of this world and yet is the best of this world. May our hearts and our minds be open so that we might experience the kingdom of God and be able to fully participate in the kingdom of God breaking into our world. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, You plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.